Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, subscribe, like, and share us with your network. Okay, so what do you know about cybersecurity? Oh, sure, spyware, ransomware, malware, phishing, and all those other things that we hear about. And sometimes we get a notice in the mail saying that we've been hacked again. But those are big companies. What about those of us who have small businesses? Do we need cybersecurity? Let me introduce you to somebody today who's going to tell us everything we need to know. Y'all say hello to Todd Mitchell. Hey, Todd. Hey, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. No problem. I'm honored to be here, Ricky. Oh, my goodness. Honor is all mine. Speaking of honor, let's get this out of the way. First of all, thank you for your service. I know that you were in the Navy, and I'm going to care about you anyway because I was in the Army, so. Thank you for your service. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for your service. <laughs> okay. So Todd, cybersecurity. I couldn't say, tell me everything because it is everywhere and has been for seemingly ever. How did you get into the cybersecurity game, Todd? Uh, I was working for the Marine Corps uh, doing cybersecurity and my best friend got hacked and he was a solo opener. He was a DJ. And he lost his database. And a DJ with no music is kind of useless. So he needed some help. And we called, literally kept Googling different keywords and called everybody we could think of on the that we found on the internet. And nobody wanted to work with a small business. Wow. Um, most of them said no straight up. Some of them said, oh, yeah, we love to work with small business. You got to have 250 employees, 10 million in revenue, five guys, permanent IT staff. And I'm like, I don't know about you, but if I got... 250 employees and 10 million in revenue. I'm on a beach drinking margaritas someplace. I'm not worried about anything. <laughs> exactly. Um, so anyways, I ended up helping him in my spare time. And then a couple more of his friends heard about it and I ended up helping them. And then he just kind of poking at me and poking at me until he convinced me to leave the corporate world and open my own business. So I'm the little guy looking out for the little guys. I love it. That is so great. And what's the name of your business, Todd? Cybersecurity for Biz with the number four. I love that cybersecurity, the number four biz. All right, we're going to talk more about that in a minute. So again, this is the thing that you mentioned, which I am really interested in. Those of us who are small business owners who have less than 250 people and $10 million in revenue, do we really need cybersecurity? Yes, you do. You, you're just as much in danger of being hacked and actually even more of a target nowadays because the bad guys know that you don't have some huge corporation looking out for all your cybersecurity. Mm, that's so scary because, you know, you start your business and you're super excited about what you do. Cybersecurity is almost the last thing you think about. So I'm a small business. As many of folks are watching, what do I need to know about cybersecurity? Because a lot of us are working, we don't we don't have, you know, 10 servers in our bedroom. It's us, the laptop, and a phone. Exactly. And a home router. And and that's part of what I do is because all those big companies, even though they won't help small businesses, uh, the main reason why they don't is because their solutions are made for a network and you don't have a network with a bunch of servers. So um, the biggest thing that I recommend is uh, prevention. And I'll put it this way. Um, I, I, all the women always laugh at me, but nobody has ever answered me. So I still don't know if it's true or not. But I think you guys are just born knowing that you don't leave your purse in front of the car when you go to the store. Okay, let it's me cool. help you. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Continue on with your life now. <laughs> yeah. And so you 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 just put your, your uh, you know, you put it in the back seat, throw your coat over it, stick it in the trunk, whatever. It's prevention. They can still break into your car and get your purse, but it's not invisible. So they're going to move on to the next easier target. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're trying to do with cybersecurity. You don't need to outrun the bear. You just need to outrun somebody else so that the bear gets them instead, right? Exactly. Um, so you want to make yourself less of a target by doing some key things like making sure you have strong passwords and you're doing backups and all your software is up to date. And we can go over a few more if you want later on. But that's, you know, you keep yourself with the basic cybersecurity principles and, you know, Keep a target off of yourself, basically. 
I mean, and, and that's really good because like you said, we're at home with our router, our laptop and our phone. And we're not, depending on the business that you've started, who wants anything that I have? You know, I don't have 9,000 clients. I don't, I'm not yet making $10 million in revenue, but you know, it is only Friday. So what, what, what does hacker want from me or any small business? So they're looking for two things. One, it's, it's a paycheck basically. So they're looking, you know, the old days they used to thump you over your head and steal your purse. Now they hack your email account, get your contact list, send an email out to all your friends saying you're stuck on the side of the road in the dark in the rain and you need 50 bucks for gas. And if three or four of your friends send it before the rest of them realize it's a scam, they still made 200 bucks and they walk off happy just from sending off a quick email. The second thing is um, your customer's information. Mm -hmm. I think you have that many clients, but even if you only have 500 clients in your database, that's still an average on the dark web is $80 for, uh, for people's personal identifiable information. So if you got a hundred clients, you know, there's $8,000 worth of data you got sitting on your computer that you don't even realize. Isn't that something, you know, you mentioned something that I have been so curious about the dark web. What is the dark web? So the easiest way to explain the dark web, for those of us that are old enough to remember the old phone that hung on the wall uh, in a phone book, <laughs> it's an unlisted, it's the same as unlisted phone numbers. You just weren't in the phone book. It's it's a website that's not registered with Google, so you can't find it when you do a Google search. You have to know the address and go directly to it. Mm -hmm. and, you hear, and you hear about this all the time. Everything's on the dark web. It sounds like there's more people on the dark web than there are on Google. And, and and then to realize that you may be on the dark web's target list and not know it, that's that's scary. Yeah. It's think of it as Facebook marketplace for bad guys. That's where if I hacked into your computer and I got a hundred email addresses with passwords or whatever, I could go on the dark web and post and say, Hey, I got all these, I'll sell them to you for two hundred bucks. And then somebody eventually hit my PayPal or Cash App or whatever and give me money and yeah. And there you go. Wow. So that speaks to those things like the malware, the spyware, uh, the ransomware. Can you briefly tell us a little bit about each one of those? Because those, again, are things you hear about in the news. And, yeah. and you know, another corporation has been hit with ransomware. Can you tell us a little bit about those? So those are easy. Um, think of it as this. It's all malicious code that somebody is getting onto your computer somehow. And we'll talk about the how in a minute. But so ransomware basically takes over your computer and encrypts it. And they'll give you the secret code to get into the encryption to get all your data back after you pay them a ransom. That's why they call it ransomware. Um, so basically, your computer is useless to you unless you pay them this money. And then um, some of the other uh, other ones like malware is basically putting code on your computer to take over your computer and turn it into a bot for their army. Um, a perfect example of when this is most most commonly that was seen was at the start of the Ukraine war, the world got together and shut off the servers in the, the satellites so that people in Russia could not access Ukraine via the internet. So they couldn't hack into them. So they came to America and hacked into your computer so that they could use your computer to get to the Ukraine. I, I literally have no words, none, you know, and then there's that, oh, the spyware thing. Yeah. So, so spyware is literally just exactly what it sounds like. If say we were in a relationship and we break up and I want to know what you're doing or try to track your whereabouts or see who you're talking to or whatever, I can put software on your phone or on your computer that allows me to track your location, see what you're messaging people, you know, things like that, hack into your accounts. Oh my gosh. And you know, I, I remember years and years and years and years and years ago that you would you would hear about these things but it was something that was absolutely out of a sci-fi movie and mm -hmm. now we're living it every day and then i mean i literally got a notice probably two weeks ago saying that another company that i was doing business with had recently been hacked and this is what we're doing and this is how you can protect yourself so right. talking now into how do I, can I protect myself from any of this stuff? Really, though, 
it goes back to what I started with is the the, the common theme in the in the uh, hacker world is if you're targeted, you're hacked. So you just need to keep keep yourself from being a target is, mm -hmm. is the bottom line. And mm -hmm. and that's by just doing the best things you can and doing the protections that you can. It's kind of I use the analogy like a house. So you've got your alarm system, you got your deadbolt locks, you know, your storm door has got another lock on it. You might even have, you know, live in a gated community with a, with a guard out front at the, at the, or dogs. Of the but if you, yeah, and, and attack dogs running around your front yard, whatever, if I really, really, really want into your house, I'm just going to get a big old pickup truck and go 80 miles an hour and drive right through your living room wall. I'm, I'm getting in your house. You know, you can't really avoid that. So it's just, how do you, make it so that it's too much of a hassle and people just move on and find somebody else to mess with. And, and that's basically what it is. And, and the second piece to it is making sure that when they do hack into your computer, the information is not readable and they can't get anything. Uh-huh. Huh. Now we're getting somewhere. So how would I do something like that? <laughs> <laughs> Encryption is the biggest one. Um, password protections making sure that not everybody, even though they have a user account, like say you're in your business, you've got a bookkeeper mm -hmm. that so you, you share a QuickBooks and they've got their own login and you've got your login, which a lot of times I've seen in smaller businesses with three or four employees. And I'm not saying anything bad, but you know, maybe they're too cheap or whatever, and they don't want to pay for the three seat QuickBook plan. So they got the one seat and they all use the same username and password to log in. And now you fire them or whatever, and now they're out running around with your username and password because you didn't remember to change it when they left. And that's how stuff happens. So reducing who has access to your information in the first place and encrypting it so that it's not readable, those are the, the biggest keys. Yeah. What's your idea on um, outside uh, backups? Because, you know, you have your your stuff that you have on your computer but then you have an external hard drive or something like that what's your thought on that so there's two ways of backing up currently either cloud or external hard drive mm -hmm. uh, i do both really wow. cloud is convenient because then no matter where you're at if you're sitting in starbucks on your phone you can still access all your files so it's in and uh but i don't trust even though they're big i mean everybody's like oh google's too big to fail you know because you got to use Google Drive or Microsoft's OneDrive and Microsoft's too big to fail. Well, 20 years ago, we all thought Sears and Kmart were too big to fail too. And Ooh. now nobody knows what they are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I personally use that for convenience, but I have a hard disk that I have sitting right here in my possession because it is my data and I want a copy of that stuff. I don't want to trust that some company is going to give it to me later on. Um, so I do both. And the wow. other reason why... You don't just want to do the hard drive mm -hmm. is because it's in the same location. If your house burns down and your lap and your external drive was sitting right next to your computer, you still lost everything. That's so true. Man, it sounds so practical, but so complex all at the same time. So there, I'm assuming there are other companies out there that do what you do, but may not necessarily be for small businesses. So if I wanted to get somebody to help me with my cybersecurity, how would I find somebody not, I mean, again, you're the only person in the universe that's doing it, but in the event there was anybody else, <laughs> what would somebody be for? What would they be asking? What kind of questions should they be looking to ask? Um, I would start with uh, how do I protect my customer's information? Because from my point of view, I look at it from your information that you mm -hmm. collect and store and transmit and work my way up. Uh, a lot of the bigger companies, like you said, um, to find those are easy. You just search for cybersecurity or network security and, you know, but they're worried about, they're worried about their equipment in their network. You know, it's the same. We all have cell phones, you know, Verizon, Comcast, AT&T, and they all have all this cybersecurity stuff that they offer you, but right. they're not worried about you losing all your baby pictures that were in your phone. They're worried about your phone taking down their network when you get hacked. Wow. That is so, so true. They're totally yeah. looking at it from their angle. They're, they're not worried about your information. They're just making sure when you do get hacked, you don't take out their network. And Man. From the other way around, I'm looking at how do we save these baby pictures that are so important to you? And it's the only copy you have, you know, what do we got to do to keep these secure? So um, the easiest way is searching for how, you know, data security, data uh, information security, things like that. 
Mm -hmm. So when you're talking to somebody in your position that this is my job, I'm here to help you, what kind of questions should someone as a small business owner who's really unfamiliar with the with all of the things that are cybersecurity, what kind of questions can they ask to know that they're getting the best deal and the right person? Yeah. So I think I would relate it to information, just how how can we protect this information? How do we make sure that if it does get compromised that they can't read it um and you know uh do a little research google um cybersecurity best practices there's depends on what website you hit there's four five six seven of them whatever but it's all the same list um and it's it's just good security and most of it is things that people have heard of before they just haven't bothered to think about it or actually do it um but if you look at those types of things it's like what are we doing to protect this information how are we keeping it safe and the second thing I would say is everybody needs to have a plan. Mm, that's what do good. you do when something bad happens? What do you do if you wake up tomorrow and find out that, you know, you get a, two or three phone calls in a row from your previous clients talking about, I got identity theft and we traced it back to the last transaction I did with you. Now, what's your plan? How do you restore your reputation? How do you make good with those people so that they'll keep their trust? Yeah. You know, and, that's, and that's, I mean, as a small business owner like you and me, you know, a data breach that cost a hundred thousand dollars, that's it. You're you're hanging the clothes sign, you're done. You know, it's in so it's important that we survive this mm -hmm. catastrophe with our reputation mm -hmm. intact because it's going to be the only thing you have. That's true at the end of the day. My gosh, Todd, there's so much information here. So if somebody wanted to reach out to you or work with you, what's the best way for them to contact you? Uh, through my website, um, cybersecurity, the number four B-I-Z, cybersecurity for biz. And and uh, I've got information on there for free, tons of it. Um, there's also easy ways to make an appointment with me, free consultation, give me a call, whatever. Okay. All right, y'all. There's so much information here about cybersecurity for those of us who are small business owners. And don't worry, if you didn't get all of Todd's information, it's all going to be in the description below. Make sure to reach out to him, especially for the free assessment part. I'm just saying. And don't forget, while you're here, subscribe, like, and share our content. Todd, my friend, before I let you go, we have to play a game. <laughs> All right, so this game is called This or That. It's really simple. I'm going to give you the choice of two or three things, and you, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? I'm ready. Let's do this. McDonald's or Burger King? McDonald's. Yellow light, slow down or speed up? Speed up. <laughs> Todd, where are you located? <laughs> I'm in New Mexico right now, but I used to live <laughs> in the inner city, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make sure. Okay, speed up. Note to self. Okay, going to the movies or movies at home? Movies at home. Okay, airplane, aisle seat or window? that one I don't really care I'd say window probably okay dressing up or dressing down dressing up oh ah, really I don't know why I'm surprised at that let's see Todd in the tuxedo I like it all right house slippers or barefoot slippers okay cats or dogs uh cat again I'm surprised okay fry it or grill it grill it Morning person or night owl? Both. <laughs> okay. I don't know what that's about, but hey, I'm not judging. I stay up I'm late and get up early in the morning anyway. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. And finally, Todd, what was what is one thing that you wish people knew about you? Uh, let me see. I am an old school gamer. Dungeons and Dragons with the dice. You went way ever since I was back. In, yeah. <laughs> Got hooked in, in my freshman year of high school and been playing it ever since. <laughs> What's the longest amount of time you've played that game? Uh, I'd say about 12, 14 hours straight. Woo! I remember well. I never played. I just heard about it. And then there was the cartoon, which I actually love. 
Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you play until the Doritos and Mountain Dew run out. <laughs> ah, that's what it was. All right. Todd, thanks so much for joining us today. I appreciate your time. Oh, thank you for having me. My pleasure, I promise. All right, everybody, that's it for this time, but don't worry. We'll be back next week with more Faith on Friday Presents. Thank you.